Hello, and welcome back to my channel. As you probably read in the title, today's video is about my favorite male skiers of all time. This list is entirely subjective and just for entertainment purposes. If you watch this video a year from now, I may have changed my opinion, so don't take this list too seriously, but I will explain why these specific athletes are my favorites nowadays. We will start with number 10, who is none other than the Finnish giant Juha Miedo. Standing at 6'5 and a half or 197 centimeters and weighing over 220 pounds or 100 kilograms, he had a very unusual body type for a cross-country skier. Despite being a super heavyweight, he managed to win the 50 kilometer in Holman Collin. Those tracks have quite a bit of elevation, so this was an unbelievable performance. He is also a charismatic guy, and a fun fact is that he's actually a world champion in being able to stay the longest in a sauna, which says something about his mental skills. His unique characteristics combined with his unique stature makes him stand out as a special guy in the cross-country skiing history, and I tend to like guys who are not like everyone else, so that's the reason he's included in the top 10. At number 9 we got the French sprint machine Lucas Chanova. This man is elegant in every way possible. His technique is elegant, he has the speed, he's a cool guy, and you know, he's from France. If we're talking about raw strength in gym exercises, this guy might be the strongest skier in history. He can push V2 further in the uphills than everyone else, and he is one of the few men who can challenge Claybo in a sprint finish. From the moment he appeared in the World Cup, I remember thinking, well, today I got a new sprint title. As I've gotten older, I have become less and less of a fanboy, so this is not representative of my thinking today, but this sprinter is still one of my favorites. His classic style is unfortunately not up to the same level as his skating, and that's the reason he is not higher than number nine. Number eight. Hans Christer Holland. This guy's endurance was outstanding. He and his former coach have been on record saying that the highest relative VO2 max score he ever got was the unreal number of 99. It might have been a measurement error, but he has several test results of around 96. To get to these numbers, you must possess extremely rare and unique genetics, and there is no way you can achieve relative values in the mid to high 90s without having mutant-like genetics, which this man truly has. Hans Christer was of course not the best technician, but for me, he still falls into the cool skier category because he had this savage capacity. Same reason I used to be fascinated by Legkoff in the past as well. Hans Christer is just a great guy in general. He's full of knowledge, he's polite, but at the same time, he's not afraid to share his opinions and those are great characteristics. Number seven, the beast from the east, Qiang Wang from China. This guy's power curve is very steep, which means he has a huge zero to five minute power, but hasn't got the best ability to sustain high power outputs for longer durations. He has obviously a big anaerobic engine. His double polling is tremendous, and the overall package with explosivity combined with technical finesse is dangerous. Another interesting fact is that he's much older than several of his competitors, and he had a steep trajectory in a phase of his career where it is very uncommon to see these drastic improvements. This guy is high up on the list. Number six, Alex Harvey from Canada. Just like the French sprinter mentioned earlier in this video, Alex Harvey represents elegance. He was one of the most efficient technicians ever, and I even included him in the top five skating technicians video last year. He was not a particularly explosive athlete, but despite not having the biggest raw power, the top speeds he was able to reach in the last 100 meters were spectacular. He was an endurance type of guy, but with the high-speed skills of an elite sprinter, which made him very unique as an athlete. It's unfortunate that he retired early, but he managed to become world champion in the 50 kilometer in 2017. The Canadian is full of charisma as well, so I had to put him in the top 10. The fifth place goes to Thomas Alsgaard from Norway. This man has a reputation for being a bohemian type of athlete, and this is probably due to his low total training volume combined with his philosophies about nutrition. However, there were several aspects of the sport where he was dedicated. He had a huge aerobic engine and did a lot of intervals in the so-called intensity zone hell, where you work between 90 and 100% of your VO2 max. His Norwegian rival Daly did the exact same thing, and to this day, there probably hasn't been anyone, before or since, who's been able to replicate the level of intensity these guys trained at. Compared to the rest of the World Cup skiers at the time, Alsgaard's skating technique was superior. 10 to 15 years ago, he was a commentator, and he was the best expert commentator they've ever had. I have also read his biography, 
where he shared lots of interesting information, including his emphasis on the importance of psychology in sports, which according to him is massively underrated. Thomas is known for having incredible genetics and is certainly one of my personal favorites. At number four, we got Sergei Ustugov. When Sergei won the Junior World Championships in 2011, I was very young and many people, including me, predicted him to be the next big thing. God knows how many times I watched this clip repeatedly back then. Sergei is not only a phenomenal skier, but also a likable guy. In 2017, he was in his prime, and I have a feeling that the level this year was something very special. Sunbi had been on the top of the sport for a long time, and Ustyugov managed to surpass him in a period where Sunbi was still close to his peak shape. So I don't think people seem to understand what kind of enormous level these two guys had that specific season. Ustyugov is one of the greatest all-rounders of all time, and he has all the characteristics I enjoy watching on screen. Aggression, explosiveness, speed, and so on. He is definitely in the category of cross-country skiers I like. Now to the podium. At third place, we have Finn Hogan Krog. I have always associated myself with this man, and that's probably the main reason he has been an idol. He had a huge gas tank, but he is also known as one of the best skating technicians of all time. He's got many of the same attributes as the previous athlete on the list. I tend to like guys who are talented, and Finn said himself that he had the feeling he was just meant to be a cross-country skier. He had an extraordinary sprint finish and is also a laid-back guy with a low stress level. In the mid-2010s, he was definitely in the top three to top five skiers in the world. At the current moment, he is 34 years old and is a shadow of himself, but he will always be one of my favorite cross-country skiers. Coming in at second place, we got Martin Johnsrud Sunby. What is it about this athlete that is so appealing to me? There's something about the extremism in the sense of dedication to the sport. He just committed to a higher degree than everyone else. The same characteristics that probably make him somewhat unpopular and repulsive to some people are ironically the same qualities that actually appeal to me. He elevated the sport to new heights, and what he represents is how far you can take it. Obsession is a real superpower. In his prime, he was the final boss of distance skiing. He mastered all techniques, but his real signature style was his notorious V2 skating. He was not my favorite skier when I was younger, but at the current moment, he is definitely in the top three. Number one, my favorite male cross-country skier. It's almost mandatory to have him at number one, right? Petter Northug Jr. from Norway. Do I even need to explain why? If you take the best pieces from the five previous athletes and you combine them, you pretty much get something like Northug. Additionally, he has amazing entertainment value, which is uncommon among cross-country skiers. He has also unique abilities, like being able to push and dig, achieving the right mode mentally, and being able to perform at his best in the most important competitions. After a tough 50 kilometer, he managed to sprint in almost the same manner as in a fresh state, which is rare, and largely due to his extraordinary mental skills. Many people who love Northug seem to dislike Sunbi, and it might be a little uncommon to have them at number one and number two, but that's the case for me. Their training was actually quite similar in many ways. Even though Sunbi had a significantly higher total volume, there were several similarities, like both of them frequently implementing longer sessions at moderate intensity, and they often did these sessions together as well. I really like both of these guys. They were my idols and they will always be. Who are your favorite skiers? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe.